Are you tired of not feeling like the best version of yourself? Do you ever feel like the pursuit of happiness is a total scam? Want to know how to live a life that doesn't suck? Or even better, a life that feels truly meaningful? Well, if you're ready to get to work, then I've got the tools you need, or should I say, I've got the rules you need. In 12 Rules for Life, longtime psychologist and educator Jordan Peterson outlines 12 rules to follow if you want to get the absolute most out of your life. Peterson, uh, sometimes controversial, but equally revered figure has been a Harvard professor, a clinical researcher, a YouTube sensation, and a decorated author. In this video, we'll show you how to use Peterson's rules to take control of your life and become the absolute best version of yourself. Let's dive right in. Rule number one is to fix your posture. Did you know that your brain is constantly monitoring your status in society? It does this by paying close attention to how others treat you. If others treat you well, it tells you your high status. If they don't, it tells you your low status. Peterson says when you slouch, you make yourself submissive to others. This makes people act dominant towards you. Your brain picks up on this and you feel less confident, which makes you act more submissive to others, reinforcing your low status. You see the problem? According to Peterson, this becomes a vicious feedback loop. The more submissive you act, the more people treat you like your low status and the more you embody that identity. On the other hand, when you stand up straight, you make yourself dominant to others. People automatically treat you with more respect. Your brain absorbs this and you feel more confident, which makes you act more dominant, reinforcing your high status. It's a feedback loop too, but not so vicious. In this case, the more dominant you act, the more people treat you like your high status and the more you see that treatment as your identity. Why should you care if people see you as low or high status? Because the higher your status, the more access you have to privileges that improve your life. For example, high status people are more respected by their peers. They're also seen as more attractive. They even have higher serotonin levels, meaning they're happier than people of lower status. Let's check in with our bodies now. Are you standing? Are you sitting straight up? Are you slouching? Let's take a deep breath. As you inhale, straighten your spine and allow your shoulders to rise. Then, as you exhale, roll your shoulders back a little and allow them to drop. Try this anytime you need a posture boost. Rule number two is to take really good care of yourself. According to the book, when we don't take care of ourselves, it's because we don't feel worthy or capable of self-care. As a result, we may self-sabotage by eating a whole bag of Doritos for dinner refusing to exercise, or staying up watching Netflix when we really need to sleep. Basically, we do things that hurt us. Try to see yourself as vital and important to the world, and see self-care as a duty that you owe yourself and others. The more important you believe yourself to be, the more motivated you are to take care of yourself, even through the most difficult circumstances. In short, love yourself the way Kanye loves Kanye. When you treat yourself with that kind of love and self-care, it makes you happier. It also supports you to be the best version of yourself. So the next time you wanna grab that bag of Doritos, pause and remember Kanye. Rule number three is to only surround yourself with people that match, support, and motivate you. There will always be people that will drag you down in order to feel better about themselves. Avoid these people and avoid people who don't take accountability for their actions. Make sure the people closest to you are people that you respect, who are striving to be the best versions of themselves, and who will push you to be the best version of yourself. Rule number four is to judge yourself only by your goals and not the goals of others. Social media has us constantly in each other's business, which makes it easy for us to compare ourselves to other people. But this comparison is a waste of energy because we all have different skills and different goals. The most powerful thing you can do is to get super clear on the ladder you're climbing. Define what you want and why. Ignore the journeys of others and get obsessed with your own success. When you stop comparing your path to the paths of others, you have a lot more energy to focus on your goals. Now, not everyone is a parent, so rule number five may not apply to you. But if you do have children, 
Teach them how to work well within the boundaries of society. Children don't automatically know how to successfully navigate life. They're curious and like to push boundaries. Checks and balances are important. If they're allowed to act however they want with no correction, there can be big social consequences. Kids who don't understand the boundaries of society usually get harshly rejected by their peers. This affects their happiness and sense of belonging. For example, if your child is rude in school, other kids might not play with them. Teachers might get frustrated with them and invest less energy into their learning. If the same habit continues into adulthood, they may lose jobs or sabotage relationships. As a parent, you can serve as a stand-in for society. You can give them a chance to make mistakes with you instead of out in the world. You can teach them strong boundaries by holding them accountable for specific rules. Kids who respect the boundaries of society tend to get treated better by their peers. This helps them grow and move forward in life without unnecessary social friction. That brings us to rule number six which is to always take accountability for your side of the street before blaming anyone else. It's easy to blame others when circumstances in your life go south, but blaming others doesn't help you grow. Next time you wanna blame something outside of yourself for your misfortunes, ask yourself if there's anything you could have done differently to create a better outcome. In the world of entertainment, I do more than just this YouTube channel. One of my more consistent gigs is filming music videos. Now, writing, directing, and shooting a music video is a lot to juggle on my own, so I always bring on an assistant director to help keep my head on straight. So during one of my earlier shoots, when I forgot a very important prop, it would have been easy to just blame it on my AD. Why didn't you remind me to bring it? But this wouldn't have helped anything. In fact, it would have made it worse. It would have put me at odds with my AD with two days of filming left, and I still wouldn't have my prop. So instead, I spoke with my AD, and we were able to come up with a solution that the client liked even better than the original. Not only was I able to maintain my relationship with my crew, but I was able to create a better final product just by taking responsibility for my own actions. Take responsibility for your role and your experiences. And always take full advantage of opportunities available to you. This will always put you in a position to better yourself. Rule number seven is to only do things that truly matter to you. It's really easy to get caught up in an existential rut and feel like life has no purpose. Making choices that feel aligned to you adds meaning to your life. For example, imagine you've got this incredible passion for the performing arts, but instead of pursuing a career in the arts, you do something you don't enjoy but pays the bills. If you truly love the arts, choosing a desk job hurts you in the long run. Why? Because you're denying yourself a life that feels meaningful for goals that don't make you happy. So don't do it. Don't settle for a life like that. Devote yourself to what matters to you and see how much more fulfilled you feel. And you know what else makes life worth living? Authenticity. Rule number eight is to live from a place of authenticity. When we aren't authentic, we turn our lives into lies. We may lie to others to boost our status. We may lie to ourselves to feel better about poor choices. Regardless of the reason, we generally know when we're not aligned to the truth and it makes us feel anxious. So define your personal truth and only act in ways that align to that truth. For example, sit down and write down the values that are most important to you. Do you value family, freedom, honesty? Ask yourself if there's anywhere in your life that you're not living by these values. Say you value honesty. Where are you not being honest with yourself and others? Then start taking steps to align yourself with your values. Maybe you're unhappy in your relationship, but you're not being honest with your partner about how you feel. In this case, aligning with your values means sitting down with your partner and telling them how you really feel so you can address what isn't working. When you get rid of the gap between how you want to show up and how you actually show up, two things happen. First, it relieves you of anxiety. In the relationship example, if you're unhappy and you communicate that to your partner, you no longer have to carry the anxiety of pretending everything's okay. Second, it leads to personal growth. Being honest in your relationship means being a better partner because it gives you the opportunity to work together towards solutions. Speaking of relationships, how we relate to others has a huge impact on our ability to find happiness and success. With that in mind, Rule number nine is to become a really good listener. Why? Well, for one thing, part of the reason we talk is to work through our thoughts. So when you're a good listener, you support others to process their thoughts. This builds trust and allows you to create stronger relationships. And by listening deeply, 
you learn from the successes and failures of others. This helps you to avoid pitfalls on your path. And did you know there might actually be a right way to listen? According to Peterson and many others, the most effective technique is to engage in mirroring. When you basically summarize what you're hearing back to the person sharing it. This forces you to deeply understand what they're telling you. In friendship, this makes the other person feel truly heard. And in conflict, it prevents escalation by keeping everyone on the same page. Rule number 10 is to approach all your problems with precision. The unknown is what makes us feel most anxious. When we don't fully understand what's wrong, we feel worse about our problems. So get very specific when you encounter problems in your life. What's wrong exactly? What do you want exactly? Why exactly? Figure out what specifically doesn't feel right, then address it. It'll keep your problems from spiraling out of control. Rule number 11 is accept that inequality exists. Peterson is well known for having controversial opinions about gender. For example, he sees men as more disobedient and women as more agreeable. He thinks that modern men are being encouraged to go against their nature by being weak and agreeable, also known as polite and kind. <laughs> He even goes so far as to say that the concept of gender inequality was created to attack and disempower the male gender. From one Peterson to another, it's like, come on, man. In short, he views men and women as fundamentally different. He thinks when we ignore these differences, we force people to go against their nature. He thinks we should embrace the differences. More specifically, he thinks that we should let men be men and raise them up tough. But from a more general standpoint, this rule basically asks us to understand that while we share many commonalities, we all have different aspects to our nature. We all have different goals, and we don't realize how much suffering we cause ourselves when we don't accept the reality of that. Trying to force others to fit into your idea of right or wrong, or to conform to what you want, is really frustrating. For example, say you start dating someone and they say they don't want kids but you do. If you don't accept that, now you're spending an entire relationship pushing someone to want something that they don't want. Until you accept that you can't control what they want, you'll always feel unsatisfied. When we can accept our differences, we relieve ourselves of that frustration. We also give ourselves permission to embrace our own uniqueness. I went to a very rural high school. I mean, literally deer strung up in trees for football games kind of rural. So as a freshman, I got a lot of crap for pretty much everything I enjoyed. I worked at a clothing store, so I loved fashion. I was in theater and show choir, things that a lot of people at my school saw as too feminine for an adolescent boy. I even started toning down how I dressed to avoid being picked on. But around my junior year, I realized that the people that got on me for those things were gonna get on me no matter what. I started to embrace the differences I had. I dressed the way I wanted to. I took pride in my show choir, and I was in every single play my school put on. Ironically, embracing my femininity led me to become the man I am today, and I'm out here living my dreams because of it. Ultimately, the takeaway should be that allowing people to be different is a way to celebrate the beautiful complexity of human nature. The final rule and arguably the most important one to living a life that doesn't suck is to savor every moment of joy you can. Life's hard. Bad things happen to good people. Pain is often inevitable. But while we do need to accept the reality of pain, we don't need to suffer endlessly. Enjoy a great cup of coffee. Revel in your partner's laugh and pet every dog you run into. Choose to see the good in your life, in the people close to you, and in the world at large. It'll help you build a successful life by keeping you hopeful, but it also just makes life better, period. Well, there you have it, folks. Now you know Jordan Peterson's rules for a successful and meaningful life. You have not one, but 12 rules you can use right now to better yourself and your experience of the world. And this is really just a snapshot. The full book has lots of insights that we didn't get to cover here today. If you're interested in going deeper, check out the short form guide to 12 rules for life. Short form makes the world's best guides to nonfiction books. They're like book summaries on steroids. You can get a five day free trial and a discounted annual subscription if you go to shortform.com slash YouTube. Click the link in the description below and support the author and publisher by buying 12 rules for life. A link to buy the book is below as well. And finally, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next short form video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.